Computing at School started back in 2008 when we were looking at um, schools, education and particularly then the move of children going on to uh, A-levels and uh, undergraduate um, admissions for computer science uh, uh, courses and realising there was a problem that the numbers were falling through the floor and we thought there must be something that we can do and identified well perhaps it's to do with that computer science isn't being taught as a discrete discipline in, in schools. In the early days, CAS recognised that there was a problem with what was being taught in schools, or perhaps more, more specifically, the way in which it was being taught in schools. There's been a, a, an ICT um, subject on the curriculum, and many schools in both primary and secondary schools were delivering ICT that generally focused as much on, or more perhaps, on how to use the technology rather than how the technology worked or to understand uh, what was going on in the, in the background of that. Um, in the primary curriculum there was always uh, computer science there, it was versed as uh, control or sequencing of instructions, but by and large it wasn't taught as well as it perhaps could have been, uh, it wasn't given the attention that it might have needed, and I think sometimes there was an issue that the members of staff who were responsible for delivering the curriculum didn't quite understand that bit as well as the digital literacy or the information technology that they were covering, um, covering, covering so well. And you know, several years ago, the uh, universities were um, crying out, saying, we've got uh, our admissions numbers are falling through the floor. What can we do? And the Council for Professors and Heads of Computing did, so, did, did a survey and realised, well, over the last decade, up to about 2010, um, numbers of students applying for higher education had fallen by 50%. At just the same time that uh, industry was saying, we've got vacancies, we need more students coming out of universities with the skill set that we need in terms of development and understanding the systems and being able to work in our, in our industries. They weren't able to find students from UK, in, UK universities to fill those uh, vacancies. And it all seemed a bit weird, you know, at a time as well when digital devices and computers and telecommunications was beginning to explode, the internet was beginning to explode, um, everybody was carrying around such devices, the children at schools were engaged uh, with those devices and parents would be complaining to us as teachers, you know, I can't get him off his Xbox or his PlayStation or he's always latched into the computer. Yet the students were not wanting to go on to study this as a subject. Schools will have enormous challenges as they begin to implement the new curriculum starting from September 2014. Um, there's no doubt in my mind and many others that you look at the uh, teachers who have been teaching ICT and doing you know, an incredible job actually. But for many of them, um, IT, ICT, computer science has not been their first choice of discipline. They've moved into it from other subjects. So there's interesting statistics that was done as part, were done as part of the Royal Society report, shut down or restart, that came out two or three years ago, um, looking at post A-level qualifications amongst teachers in IT and then comparing that with maybe maths or science or music uh, and realising it's, it's somewhere around 34, 35% of teachers in secondary schools had a post A-level qualification. Well, that leaves kind of 66, 70% of teachers didn't have. Um, and so they've been doing a remarkable job. As we move into in increasing the level of computer science into the curriculum, well, that statistic won't have gone away, and to a certain extent it's worsened, because they might have had IT qualifications, but they certainly won't have had computer science qualifications. And I think really interestingly that if I was, as a teacher, if I was asked to suddenly maybe cover a physics lesson, um, I had had physics lessons when I was at school, so would have had some awareness of, well, I sort of know what goes on in a physics lesson. But for the 100% of teachers uh, out there, or no, more or less 100%, we didn't have computer science lessons at school. So what does actually go on in a computer science lesson? What is the pedagogy? What are the teaching styles? What are the content? What's the subject knowledge? I've got no point of reference. So there are enormous challenges um, that will confront the teachers. And what Computing at School have been working on is kind of setting up partnerships and setting up networks, working with universities such as the University of East Anglia in trying to engage with the computer scientists professionals in those universities, the education professionals in those universities and say, look, we need to work together on this. There are teachers out there who need our collective support. You have a role to play here in supporting those teachers by providing training, providing resources, such as this online online teaching resource that we're developing at uh, at, uh, at, at at UEA 
and in addition trying to network together uh, teachers in their locality so they can share ideas, share resources, provide qualification opportunities, uh, professional development opportunities, uh, where teachers can learn from each other in harness with the, uh, with the universities and gradually uh, over a period of time starting from September 2014, I don't think any teacher should regard that as an end point for their professional development, that's the starting point, that from that point we begin to help and support teachers as they begin to embrace the new curriculum. In the new program of study for the National Curriculum to be implemented in September 2014, um, the, there are sort of three core strands, um, computer science, information technology and digital literacy. Now it is possible to extrapolate out and divide out the various bullet points in the program of study that teachers can read and say, oh that looks more computer science, or that looks more IT, or that looks more digital literacy. Um, and that is certainly possible. Um, I'm not entirely convinced whether that would be a good uh, methodology for implementing in the classroom in that the teacher thought, oh today I'm going to be doing a digital literacy lesson or today I'm going to be doing a computer science lesson, but look at a much more kind of holistic view of the subject into which on a on particular topic, so you might be looking at, you know, uh, search engines and how search engines work or doing a, do, doing a search. Well, you can bring in aspects of e-safety, of keeping yourself safe online. You could be looking at the use of technology and the use of keywords and the use of best ways of framing your uh, keywords that you're using to search to get the best results. But then you can begin to go in more into the kind of computer science end. Well, how is the sorting coming up on that, on that search results page? Uh, what is this page ranking algorithm? Well, what actually is an algorithm? And so you can begin to take looking at topics that one might cover the whole breadth of use of technology, but then adding into there ways in which that technology is actually working. And to look at so that within any one lesson, you may be covering aspects of digital literacy, how children are going to be using the computers and keeping themselves safe online and the right, the right choice of technology that is appropriate for the particular task they're wanting to solve, uh, the information technology about the way in which they're using particular uh, applications or systems in order to solve real world problems, but then also begin to touch on the computer science bits and the algorithms and the way in which data is being used and being presented uh, to actually see, well, that's the computer science bit. That's, it's not just magic. This is how though those, uh, for example, within the, search within the search results, this is how those results are being sorted. This is what sorting is. It's one of those kind of fundamental algorithms, uh, which is just a, a kind of posh word for a, a sequence of instructions in order to solve a particular problem. Uh, it's a way in which that algorithm is being used in the back end in the software to actually generate that results to make the results more meaningful to the, uh, to, to the student.